My name is Keevan Lewis, and I'm the Museum's Programs Outreach Coordinator for the National Museum of the American Indian. At the museum, I oversee the Artist Leadership Program, which targets individual artists for the Western Hemisphere. It also targets museums and cultural centers here in the United States and Canada. We've been doing a prototype here at the Institute of American Indian Arts to target uh, college students for a one-week visit to the collections in Suitland, Maryland during spring break. My name is Melissa Shaganoff. I'm from Kenai, Alaska. I'm on Athabascan and Paiute. Um, and this is my second semester here at IAI. My name is Charles Rencounter. I'm from uh, Rapid City, South Dakota. I am a Sichangu Lakota from the Kuichasha Oyate uh, on the Lower Brule Reservation in South Dakota on the Missouri River. This is my reaction to my DC trip in uh, this past spring break. And it's just sort of my impression of what I came away with, the kind of visual references that I gained and how I'm using them in my work today. I kind of plan to do um, a mix between collage and uh, figure painting. I wanted to leave some parts open, you know, some parts that have a little bit more breadth to them, like they're kind of airy. Um, a lot of the symbols and motifs that I found on um, the regalia and amulets that I looked at um, were things that aren't really used back home anymore and um, I'm trying to bring them back through my work, which is art, so I'm trying to incorporate them as um, symbols and motifs in my paintings that I can use um, to sort of express this sort of cultural heritage that I'm regaining. So, uh, I'm kind of doing an abstraction of the quill work that I saw. It was a quill work done on, on a loom, and they're done in these like long strips, and the quills hang down, and then there's a backing put on them and it's kind of this lost art. I'm trying to sort of represent that and eventually I want to learn how to do that. So what I'm doing is I'm creating like a little frame, almost like my own little loom out of string. And then I'm creating the warps back and forth as I wrap around each line. And then I'm weaving a weft through uh, as if it was like the quill. So it's kind of like this representation of, of the quill work. So after my trip in DC, I. Uh, I spoke to a lot of the, the individuals at the Smithsonian there on how I think that my work is probably never going to be the same. Um, seeing these references and these these images um, were really moving because they were part of something that I innately felt were part of me, but I didn't know what they looked like. I just knew them from, you know, stories and you know stories around the coffee table, really. <laughs> And so part of the project for the National Museum of the American Indian uh, is to make a, a, a pipe bowl. Uh, the chanupa uh, is the pipe bowl. And, and, and the part that I'm really excited about is, and, and that I'm focusing maybe a little more on, is the uh, calumet, which is uh, kind of like the stem. And so I think uh, the calumet started out as an arrow, and, and then it became uh, it was sort of came out it started out as maybe a weapon or an arrow, and then it evolved into the staff that was decorated with quills and beads and, and cloth and different things. Um, and so it went away from being a weapon to becoming something that uh, was just in itself beautiful, and then it evolved further into this stem that fit into a pipe, and the pipe was more of an embellishment onto the stem than the stem was an embellishment into the pipe. Um, and today, in the 21st century, the pipe as a whole has been called many times a peace pipe. After visiting the uh, Smithsonian's National Museum of the American Indian, and coming home, you know, I was really intrigued by a, by a piece that I saw in the collection, and I believe it was probably like at least around a thousand years ago, you know, that they carved that piece, whoever that was. But it was a bird, and it was much like this one here. Today, we have with us two nationally recognized student artists from this nationally recognized place of learning the Institute of American Indian Arts. The first day we were there, uh, 
it was really overwhelming. It's like uh, I like I thought before I, I'd be looking at stuff you know from behind a glass you know and just empirically and visually experiencing them. And um, when I walked in, I saw the regalia and the items um, on shelves like at my eye level. Like I was able to breathe them <laughs> and in, and uh, it was just a really amazing experience and kind of overwhelming. Um, but about halfway through the day, uh, I was looking at all the Atna items, and there's about ten. So it was a little, it was a small collection of the Atna Athabascan items, and um, just one of the conservators was. We were looking at this knife, and she was like, well, "Why don't you turn it over? You know, you can do anything you want. You're here. <laughs> do it. Touch it. Move it." And as we did, uh, we, we were looking and inscribed in the leather was um, the name Chief Nikolai, uh, 1901, Copper River, Alaska, which is my great-great-granduncle. My experience was much like Melissa's. Um, I, you know, I think I explained to you the, the amount of uh, welcome that they bestowed upon us when we were there. Uh, you know, the first day was to go into collections. Uh, so when I walked in that room and I seen this rack full of them, I was just standing there going, oh my God, <laughs> they're all there. They're actually there. And, um, and I'm going to be able to look at them. Um, and I, and I, I just was really taken by that. My project that I proposed was a calumet. Um, and it was one of the things that stuck out to me because it's an item that's used to uh, create peace. And if you had one of these uh, and you presented it, uh, and the power that was bestowed in, in something like this uh, had the ability to stop folks from thinking about killing each other or hurting each other or going to war and to stop and think about how to trade with each other, how to, how to talk with each other, how to do these kinds of things. The other part of my project is this here uh, uh, pipe. Uh, pipes became part of the Calumet, and I thought our school should have this one because I thought of the Thunderbird, and I thought of the fact that we're putting the, the tobacco in the mouth, we're feeding this bird. And so to me it was like giving knowledge to the students at IIA by feeding them, uh, feeding them knowledge. And so these are some of the metaphors that I came up with when I was making this piece. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.